All right, so it's going to give it a little bit of depth and volume on that, okay? So there's that glove, not so bad. All right, I don't like to use a lot of the, um, how do you say, a lot of the smudge tool. It just does some damage on your, <clears throat> it does a lot of damage on your processor, and you'll pretty much, especially with a file this big, um, it will eat up a lot of your files. So if I ever need to revert a little bit, for example, this looks a little flat when I zoom away. It just looks like a plasticky look. If I want to get some of that color back, I simply sample somewhere else. And I'm going to drop the saturation of the brush to around 50%. Now, the quick way to drop the saturation on this, if you use your brush tool, you activate it, the numbers in the top of your keyboard, you have 1 to 0. All right, if you do 0, it goes 100%. And you can see right there the quick change to 100%. If I do 1, it drops to 10% of the brush. However, I'm just going to do 50, so I hit the 5 on my keyboard. And notice I can quickly, pretty much, get some of that tone back without me pretty much ruining the shadows that are already done. That right there doesn't look too good, so I'm going to do maybe 30. Just to regain some of it back. I kind of like like a brushy look. It's just the way that I am. Cool. All right, cool beans. So, you can see the brush. Not a big deal. Uh, and this is something you're going to have to play with back and forth. Whoops. That's the shadow tool. The burn tool, my bad. I'm not using correct terminology. There we go. Right there, right there, and right there. Cool beans. So that takes care of that. All right, so let's go over to the jacket. All right. Shift O allows you to switch around between your tools. This right here is going to have a little bit of highlight. Same thing's going to be the color here. And then maybe a little bit here. And I'm going to switch to my burn tool. Can you say burned, burned? Bonk. All right. Yeah, it's okay. Not too bad. Yeah, especially as I'm feeling crazy. Cool beans. All right. So again, something you're going to have to play with a little bit. I'm just trying to make this like a nice quickie. And it gives some girth to that jacket by adding like a lip with some highlights. There we go. Same thing goes with that right there. All right, so when I swim out, see how it looks like it has now some thickness to that jacket. All right, very cool. And then I'm going to deselect. And then I'm going to go right here to this area. Highlight, 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 highlight. Highlight, 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 and then let me go to the burn tool. Burnt, burnt tool, burnt, burnt, burnt tool. Not too bad. All right. Now, this is something you'll see a lot of people do. You know, they pretty much go in and they do a lot of their tonals on gray tone. And it really is the fastest way to do it. For the longest time, I just kind of saw it. I'm like, gray tones? Really? Eh, whatever. But, you know, when I did it a couple times, it started to make a little more sense. And you get a lot more detail quicker. Because when you get into graphics professionally, everything was due yesterday. And you have to make things work fast. And especially when you're in an industry where you can't really become attached to your work. Um, and I'll tell you this right now, I cannot tell you how many times I've done a piece that's taken me, I don't know, a week to do. And then we send to the client, they're like, I don't like it, or this is great. Can you change this and this and this and this and this? So you kind of get used to working quick, and you don't get very attached to your work, which I'll tell you, if you're one of those people that are offended by somebody telling you, hey, your arms or legs are too long, don't, don't work in my industry. You'll get eaten alive within a week. You need to have some thick, thick skin. All right, there we go. Whoops. A little too far out. There we go. Cool beans. So this is the highlight on the shirt. Because remember, this is going to be a big fireball, so it's going to be a lot of lighting coming from that. And then let's do a little bit of shadow. Not a lot. 
a little bit from the inside of the jacket because this is mass overlapping another mass. Put it on the edge right there. All right, very cool. All right, now let's go back here. Oh. One more. Yeah, when you select it and you use your shadows, it gives you a little bit more of a uh, <coughs> of a control you normally would not get if you actually try to um, if you actually try to do it manually, like just kind of trying to be careful around it. I'm just gonna select from there. Hmm. There you go. There's my shadow. And then I'm going to select the highlight. Oops, no, that's the saturation. That's the sponge. And then... Very cool. Ah, I'm Chris, and I'm an emotion lord. Blah. Taking this to that lip. And let's go over to his hair. Okay, and I'm gonna go over here, like that. Oh, that was shadow, the highlight doesn't make sense over there. Yeah, make sure you're trying to make sense of your highlights if you're gonna be making them. <laughs> I still don't like that highlight there. There we go. Alright, not too bad. Saving. Saving it, saving it, saving it. Alright, cool beans. And all I have is the arm back here. Very cool. Alright, so I'm going to hit O for my shadows. But you gotta keep in mind here as well, he's got a second glowing light here. So you want to be careful that you're not overshadowing what you shouldn't. So because his hand are glowing, it's gonna add a little bit of glow to that right there. This whole palm. Fist pump. That's no, kidding. Um, this whole fist is glowing. This is glowing. That's glowing. Very cool. And then he's gonna have a slight glow here. It's not perfect, but for for, for what I'm making right now, it's just basic fan art. I'm not that worried about it. All right. Very cool. So there's Chris. I mean. Let me go ahead and duplicate this real quick. Bring this down. Uh, turn that on. Control U. Drop saturation. You can see the difference. All right. Um, so that's before. That's after. Before and after. So you can see a little bit of difference how much highlights do to your artwork. Okay. So that's pretty good. And the fact that you understand um, where your colors are, where your lighting is especially, it really makes a big of a difference. Oh, this water is amazing. All right, so now that we have the highlights and the shadows selected, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start pretty much creating a folder for my character Chris here. I like to keep all my stuff with my characters together, so later on I can quickly move them around. So I'm going to hit Control G, and Control G pretty much makes a group. The other thing you can do, you can have them selected, and I believe if I hold on Shift, yep, hold on Shift in my folder down here, it also creates a group, but Control G is pretty much the best way to go. I choose Chris. Chris. Where's my S? There we go. Control S to save. And now we can go ahead and move over to the next section of this. The next section of this is pretty much creating um, overlay maps or gradient, excuse me, adjustment layers to certain areas. Now, oh, excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start by using the blue on right here, the specific blue. Now, 
if I simply go here and I have contiguous. Contiguous, pretty much what it does is it only selects the pixel points that are similar that are selected to each other, or pretty much they're touching. All right. However, when I turn contiguous off and I want to select pretty much everything that is the same color, literally the exact same color with the same saturation, it is a very good thing to turn this off so that way you can quickly select everything that is of that exact same color. So this turns out to be great for us. So now that I have that quickly selected, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off temporarily and I still have my selection active. Then I'm going to go to image, excuse me, layers, new adjustment layers, all right, and you're going to go to one that it is, uh, where are you? Where's my gradient layer? There we go, gradient map layer. Anyway, it's going to ask you to give it a name. I'm going to call this main blue. Actually, no, I'll just call it blue gloves, shirt, and boot. I think boot is spelled right. A couple other things you have right here. Not only can you name it, you can also apply a color. This is great when you have, like, you're doing a very com complicated, like, um, map painting where you might have to create a background from scratch using other photos so you want to know okay where's my trees and everything that is a tree you make it green or anything that it's like water you make it blue or whatever so if you want to quickly find stuff you can quickly do that so for example since he's blue I'm going to make him blue and you're, what you're going to see is the eyeball here is going to turn blue you can also change the mode so you can actually have the item come here or come in with like already a blending mode, which is the same thing as this up here. This is pretty much a blending mode. And you can also change the opacity. But right now, I'm quickly just going to hit OK. And this is what it does. It looks like absolutely nothing has happened. However, if you see down here, everywhere we have selected, it has automatically created a mask, which is pretty cool. And then right here, there's my <laughs> my thumbnail for my gradient. And then right here is my properties for that adjustment layer. Now, in the previous versions of Adobe, um, it, what it used to do is it used to literally apply the adjustment layers directly on the layer you were working on, which it was a blessing and a curse, but unfortunately if what you end up having to do is you have to pretty much go back and either duplicate the layer before you did anything to it, or pretty much you were stuck. So if you want to go back, you pretty much have to reconstruct the whole layer itself. This is what it does is you pretty much just apply the layer on top of it and you don't have to commit to any of the changes if that makes any sense. All right. So, excuse me guys. So what I'm going to do here, I want to apply some of that blue that we already have created. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to click here and it's going to give me this option here. Now, if I have some of these layers already, I already have some colors pre-built on here, which I can use, or I can pretty much create my own. So, I want to create, in my shadows, a darker blue. That one's not so bad. And then I'm going to take these off, because I don't like that very much. However, I can create a new icon, double-click on it, and then I can sample my colors from down here. So, that way I can give it colors closer to what is to the original color palette. So as you can see right here, everywhere where there's a shadow, it is a little darker. I can even push the shadows up, which is kind of nice. I don't know what that is or where you came from. And then I can go here, and I can even sample this color here, because remember, this is part of his glow. So now you're trying to get a really nice gradient of colors that you simply create it with using gray tones. Does it look amazing? Absolutely not. Is it an option? Yes. But it's still pretty cool. All right, so that's one way you can go about it. All right, the other thing that you could do if you don't like the gradient maps, you can simply go ahead and turn your colors back on, and then you could do an overlay. Nah, overlay doesn't work very well, so let's try multiply. Multiply works pretty good. So that is, again, another way you could quickly pretty much get some pretty much depth to your colors without you having to go too crazy with it. And if you don't like it, you can pretty much just, you know, move on and move on with your bad self. All right, so, so far you have adjustment layers if you like to use those. I've seen people use them brilliantly, but it takes a while to set them up. So I'm pretty much going to go ahead and I'm just simply going to use my color layer and just apply it on top of it and then go back in and add some highlights. So it's up to you which method you want to use. This one with the adjustment layers, it makes your file a hell of a lot bigger, not going to lie to you. Uh, using pretty much a color and then just using gray below allows you to quickly adjust it and not kill the file size. I wonder what, how big this file is at this point. This is already at 368 megabytes. 
So if that gives you an idea, if your computer can handle that, go nuts. If your computer cannot handle that, don't do it. All right. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to delete that. But I just wanted to quickly show you that. I might go back and use that for maybe some highlights a little bit further down. But from having flat tones to having that, that's not bad. You know, that's pretty much a good quickie way get your stuff done. Again, we're still doing the basics. I'm not that very worried about it. All right. Now, something else that I do want to do, I'm going to temporarily turn off these background colors. I'm going to turn this back to normal. All right. I want to add some color to the line art. Okay. Black and white is okay, but I want to add some color to it. Whoops. What I do? Oops. Sorry. Photoshop. Control S to save just before it crashes. All right, I want to add some color to the line art. So right here, the first thing you want to do is turn everything off, and I mean everything off except for your line art. All right, go to your channels, hold on Control and click on RGB, and inverse your selection. Once you have that, go back in and turn on your colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer above this, and I'm going to call this color line. All right. From here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sample the color. I'm going to drop the saturation and actually I'm going to make it a little darker. And I'm going to start with like the hair. Oops, make sure the saturation or the flow of your brush is at 100%. As you can see, I'm quickly going in and I'm coloring my line art. And again, this is not the only method. However, it is another method. That's the beauty about Photoshop. There's always more than one way to get the same thing done. Cool beans. I'm going to sample the skin. Drops the saturation down a little bit. Go right here in the mouth. And if you want to quickly see if your line edge is working out, just simply hit Control D to deselect. And that is before the color, after the color, before the color, after the color. So I'm going to Control C so that way I go back to my selection. And I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing right here. Now, this right here is supposed to be his glowing eyes. So I'm actually going to go the opposite way and make that brighter. supposed to be crazy right don't kill my Beth Rah, crazy 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 eyes crazy eyes all right very cool my teeth I'm gonna go with an off gray uh, let me go back over here Whoop. again this is stuff that you might want to go back and fix and do your own thing later on Maybe even clean out the line art more. I just didn't have enough time to clean the line art. Do, do, do. Make that darker. Oh, that's too close. I need that to be even darker. But this way, you're pretty much sampling the colors dead on. And you're pretty much getting the exact, um, pretty much darker tone of what you have there before. Make sure you're coloring stuff all the way through. So you end up with some spotty stuff here and there. Cool beans. That doesn't look too bad. All right, so let me go ahead and borrow this blue here. Another thing I might want to do is go back in and clean a couple things later on. Okay, and no, that's too close. Go back over here. A good rule of thumb is, and this a lot of people debate with you, if you have darker clothing, do your lines a little lighter so that way they stand out. Uh, because otherwise, if you have darker clothes, and by the way, never use pure black. Use a dark gray like we're seeing here. Um, if you, again, this is something you're going to have to experiment with. Uh, if you're doing lighter type color clothing, go ahead and use a, excuse me, uh, I think I lost track of, track of what I was saying. Darker colors use lighter lines. Lighter colors use darker lines. That's pretty much what I meant to say. Right here, got the hand. And oh, this is something that's glowy. 
So I'm gonna make my brush bigger because it's the hand. I go this way, I don't miss anything. Cool beans, and then right here, this will glow. Whoops. Should I can sample the same blue? Make that brighter. This is a section where it's glowing. That's why I don't mind doing it this way and curving that roll a little bit. <laughs> cool beans. And we also have that color here as well. And I gotta really go back in and repair that. That's okay. All right, there's a glow here and here. There's a glow here and here. And then blue. Oh, we at spin. Oh, we at spin. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, I've been watching a lot of old cartoons when I was a kid recently. Alright, cool, cool. Alright, so let's go ahead right here to the shirt, now that we have most of that blue. Make this, nope, uh, hair darker. Okay, that works for there. My pants. Alright, that's not too bad. And then let's pick some of the hair darker for this. Make sure you get all your line art as best as possible. I'm gonna borrow this. I believe this was his ear originally. This should be his ear. Alright, so let's go ahead and deselect. Let's see if we missed anything. Alright, doesn't look too bad. Turn on that green. Alright, so there he is with some color lines. Now you can pick whether you like the line art or the color line. That's up to you. I usually like to find somewhere at 50% of the color line. actually looks a little bit better. So it has a little bit of the kiss of the color, the original character. And then right here you pretty much have pretty much the, the line art itself. So color line, black and white line, all that fun stuff. And then let's go ahead and turn this back on. And this, what do we decide on? Multiply? This got to be something else. Soft light? No. Heart light? No. Vivid light? Nay. Linear light? No. Mm. Oops, done it three times. Ew. No. It's got to be lighten. Just look like caca. That just looks like plastic. That's just leave it for multiply right now. Alright, cool beans.
Okay, again, I'm not very worried about this because remember, I haven't even added the lighting or any of the other stuff to this. So for right now, this will work. All right, so Chris is done. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's close that out. And then let's go back to my original line art. Now, at this point, I have one character done not too shabby but then I want to go ahead and I start working on my other characters now I will tell you right now <clears throat> drawing a really good uh, pinup art that has multiple characters on it at times it's kind of a pain in the ass um, this was one that I was just kind of drawing for fun I wasn't even keeping track of who was located where but you pretty much want to keep track of okay where's the floor where's the perspective what are they looking at all that fun stuff so doing a group picture that actually looks dynamic it is actually very very difficult <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie to you but you know it is always fun to at least try once or twice so right here I'm gonna create my Beth line art all right, and just like before, uh, you can either go ahead and just use the pie line tool. I'm just going to use my lasso tool so I can quickly draw around it. That's the leg. Do, 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 do. Ah. Just control shift I, delete, and then let's go ahead and do some cleanup. Oh, her foot's missing. My goodness, we can't be having that. All right, shift I and then let's delete cool beans all right now with her we're gonna have to do some reconstruction because unfortunately she was being overlapped by another character which is okay but you know we want to make sure that she looks like the, her mass and volume still makes sense within the space But I will tell you that normally, if I was drawing this digitally, I would literally draw everybody on their own layer. But in this case, I was at work, and I was at sick, and I wasn't planning to color this. I was just kind of having fun. So I kind of drew them all together. But if you're ever stuck in a situation where you have to quickly separate your stuff, now you know what to do. Cool beans. So we're getting rid of Chris. Best bud. Do, 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 uh, uh. There's Wallow's foot. All right, very cool. So I pretty much have just nothing but her at this point. And I can quickly go in and reconstruct. Hit D for default. Use my brush tool. And I like to use my figure brush. cool so that reconstructs that all right cool and right here let me rotate my palette and I'm going to move that she's got an over jacket cool beans cool beans and I think she's got boobs I think does she got boobs no but her boobs are inside her jacket I'll clean that in and then let's go over here and yeah Beth has very 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 tiny feet it's something that the creator likes to do he likes to draw very tiny feet women tiny feet very very tiny feet Alright, very cool. Let me show you draw a lip if there's an item that's going inside something else. 